Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to the brand new tutorial channel. For the first tutorial, I'm going to be reiterating the player move script, fit with a ground check so you can only jump once and a full explanation of everything we do so you can make any 2D object move left and right and jump as well. If you enjoy it, help start this channel off and subscribe. Let's get into it. As you can see here in our scene, we've got our main camera, a player, and a floor. And at the moment, if we press play, absolutely nothing happens as expected. But before we can jump right into the code, there are a few things we've got to do to ensure that it will work. Firstly, we need to head to our player and we need to give him a few components. And the first one is a rigid body, 2D. And that's essentially gonna mean that gravity is now gonna interact with this object. So now if we press play, the cube is gonna drop and of course it's not gonna collide with the box because neither of them have another component we're about to add. And that component is a box collider 2D. So I'm gonna type in box, we're gonna to go to 2D because we're in a 2D project. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that. And now you can see our two components, rigid body 2D and box collider 2D. It is very important that it is the 2D version of these objects. Now, if we head over to our scene tab and I zoom in just a little bit. Now, if I go to my box collider and hit edit collider, which is this little kind of, these three dots here, you can see we've got these four green lines outside our box. And I can drag these little dots and move them and make them bigger. And this is going to determine how big the collider is for our box. So for example, if this was all the way down here, it would look like the cube is floating in the air when in reality it's not. But I'm going to go ahead and control Z that just to get it back to the normal size, which it should automatically default to. But for whatever reason, if you've got a player that is a little bit of a weird shape and you need to adjust it, that is how to do that. Now we need to do the same to our floor, except without the rigid body. So we're just going to add a box collider 2D again. If I go and focus on him with F, hit that edit collider, you can see we've got this nice subtle green line around it. So we know it's in the right place. Finally, the last thing we're going to do, we are going to select our player in the hierarchy here and we're going to go to his inspector tab. We're going to go to tag right at the top, untagged, and we're going to hit this add tag. And the reason we're going to do this is because in the future of your project, you're going to need to define what the player object is. And we're also going to need to do this for the floor so we can decide where the floor is and where the ground is and what we know we can jump on and what we can't. So we're going to hit this add sign and we're going to type in player with a capital P It's very important. And we're also going to make one for the floor as well. So we're going to type in F L O O R capital F. Now we need to actually assign them. So we're going to go to player tag player then we're going to go to floor tag floor now that is everything we need to do we need to head into a script and do the rest of the work from there so what we're going to do we're going to select our player we're going to scroll down to add component and we're just going to type in player movement just like that and as you can see nothing comes up all that's going to come up is new script we're going to hit that then it's going to give us a name by default which is what we just typed in and we're going to click create and add from there we can select this right click and hit open and it will open your visual studio version of choice so the first thing we need to do is assign some variables in our visual studio code so we're going to go to the top here and we're just going to enter it and we need to define a float for speed so we're going to go public so it's accessible in our unity project float and then we're just going to call this speed and then remember a semicolon at the end as well we're then going to do the same for jump so it needs to be public again so we can access it in unity float and then hit jump just like that finally we need a private float and this float is going to be used to assign our left and right movement one more variable we need is we need to access our rigid body so we're going to go public rigid body 2d remember it's a 2d one and we're just going to call it rb for simplicity references now like i said firstly we need to assign our move so we're going to type in move and then we're going to use input so we're going to be using the old Unity input system. This is the old one, but it is the one that is more accessible for everybody. So it's input dot get axis. And then we're going to be using the horizontal string name. Now we need to assign the velocity of our rigid body so we can actually make him move because at the moment this is because at the moment this just is not enough to get him to move. So we're going to type in RB. So we're referencing the rigid body we made at the top. I'm going to do dot velocity. So now we're referencing the velocity. And we're going to go equals to. So the velocity of our rigid body is equal to a new vector 2. So then this vector 2 is going to take in two floats. Our first one is going to be speed multiplied by that move. So we're going to be multiplying our move float times whatever we set our speed to. 
So that's float number one, which is our X axis float, which is the one that matters in this case. So then we can set our Y float to whatever the velocity on the Y is of our player right now. So that will not be affecting our left and right movement. Now, if we head back into our Unity script, if we actually press play here, it will not work. And this is why we get a error message, which is the variable RB of player movement has not been assigned. So to fix that, we're gonna to head to our player here. And you can see down here, we've got a couple of parameters that we need to change. So for example, our rigid body, we are gonna drag him in right here. And for our speed, we can set it to a speed of five. Now, if we hit play and we press A and D, you can see our cube actually moves. So now the next thing we're gonna do is create our little jump. So we can't follow the exact same method we did for moving left and right for jumping. What we're actually gonna do this time is use an if statement. So we're gonna do if, then we're gonna use our input system again. So input dot get button down. So this basically means if a button is being pressed and the button in reference is capital J U M P for jump. We're gonna do RB dot add false. Then we're gonna do new vector two and then we're going to do rb.velocity.x and jump we don't actually want to affect the x axis we just want to affect the y so we're going to put our jump float in here and then a semicolon to close that off back in unity we're going to click our player here we're going to go back down and we are going to assign a number such as 200 for our jump and the reason it is such a big number is due is just due to the nature of how we are making our player jump but using this method, it means we have a lot more detailed control on how we want our player to jump and how much by. So now if we wanna hit the play button here, you can see we can move left. We can also move right. And if we hit the space bar, we can jump. Another one issue with this currently is we can double jump. We can also triple jump. And if we really want, we can truly fly away. And of course that is not what we want. So do you remember when we assigned this floor tag to our box right here? Well, now that is gonna come in handy. So in terms of creating a ground check for our player, there are two ways we can go about it. One is using a box collider and a method called on collision enter. And another one is using a raycast. Now for simplicity reasons, and to make this easy to understand, the method we're gonna be using today is the box collider one. In more complicated projects and more long-term projects, I would recommend using the Raycast method, but I'm gonna be making a video for this in the near future. So stay tuned and subscribe if you're enjoying this one. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go back up to our variables up here, and we're gonna add a new one. We're gonna add a Boolean. So we're gonna go public, ball, and we're gonna call it is jumping. Now, if you don't know, a ball is just a true or false statement. So we're gonna head down to the bottom here. We're gonna enter outside of our update function. I'm gonna do private void on collision enter 2D. So you can see it right here. It's gotta be the 2D one. I'm gonna change the collision type to other. Now you don't have to do this, but for me, I've just always used this word. I find it easier to understand when we're talking about other game objects. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do if other, so we're referencing this other right here. If the collision type, then we're gonna do got dot, then we're gonna do dot game object dot compare tag. So this basically means if the object we are colliding with has a tag of, and remember we assigned it to floor with a capital F. And inside our curly brackets, we are gonna say is jumping is equal to false. So what we're saying now is as we collide with the floor, that means we're not jumping, so we're gonna set is jumping to false. Now we need to kind of do the reverse. So we're gonna do private void on collision, and we're gonna do exit this time. Void on collision exit 2D, change our collision type to other, and then head inside our curly brackets. And we're gonna do if other dot game object dot compare tag, and we're gonna call it floor again. Now inside our curly brackets, we are gonna set is jumping to true this time. Because what we're saying now is if we are leaving the floor, so if the game object that we are leaving the collision, that means we are jumping. Now you may be able to spot some loopholes with this. For example, if we were to just fall off the object, then our game is gonna think we are jumping. But in terms of a simple 2D move and jump ground check, this works for now. So to finish this off, to get it working, where we have our if statement right here, we need to add another parameter to that. So we're gonna do if input.getButtonDown jump 
And then in between these two brackets, I'm gonna hit space and we're gonna use the and function. We need to do it twice, this represents and. And we're gonna do if is jumping is equal to false. Make sure this has two equal signs here. So now what we're saying is if we press the space bar, but we're in the air, then this function will not run because is jumping is true. So both of these parameters have to be the case, otherwise this will not be able to run. So now we can move left, we can move right, and we can hit jump. But if I spam hit jump, you can see we only jump once, which is exactly what we want. So there we have it. We have a very simple 2D move and jump that you can apply to any 2D object in your game. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's very simple tutorial. Stay tuned for many, many more on the channel. You may have seen a very similar tutorial on my old channel, but I thought I would make a new one on here fully explained so you can just access all of these tutorials in the same place. Guys, I'll thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.